12 months. 12 months ago, Bayer Leverkusen were a team that looked doomed for their first ever relegation. 12 months later, a lot has changed. Leverkusen have always been a team that hovered in the top half of the Bundesliga. They've always been competitive, but something was going wrong and they needed to find someone capable of fixing it. Luckily for them, someone capable showed up just in time. Chabi Alonso, one of the best football minds on the pitch from the early 2000s to only six years ago, is now making a strong name for himself as one of the best football minds off the pitch. In 2023, Leverkusen have amassed 51 points in the Bundesliga at the time of recording this video. 13 points off of Borussia Dortmund, sure, but only 3 points off the team that actually won last year. It's a fascinating story, it really is, but before we jump to any conclusions regarding how things might turn out, we have to remember why this team is called Neverkusen. Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tinashe. Subscribe or whatever. I think I'm supposed to say that. As we speak, seven Bundesliga games have taken place and Bayer Leverkusen have won six of them and only drawn one. Just like last year, Harry Kane has to sit and look up at his good mate Granit Xhaka on the league table yet again. Life's not fair. Along with Barcelona and Nice, Bayer Leverkusen is one of only three teams in the major five leagues to be unbeaten across all competitions so far. The press are already doing their thing, saying that Leverkusen are title contenders, but I don't think that means very much at this point, especially when we're talking about a league where one team has won the title for the past 11 years in a row. But make no mistake, even though this season is still in its infancy, this is something extremely commendable, especially considering that this has all happened over the course of about a year. To understand how all of this came to be, we have to turn the clock back to 2022. The history of Bayer Leverkusen is one that very much includes attacking positive football. To a lot of people, if you mention Bayer Leverkusen, they will instantly start thinking about names like Michael Balak, Lucio, Dimitar Berbatov, Yildiray Basturk, and much more. They will also be remembered of the fact that this team and many others that came before and after them failed to win any major trophies. 1993 was the last time that this team won anything, the DFB Pokal. Since then, they've been runners-up in the league five times, the runners-up in the DFB Pokal three times, and even a Champions League runner-up once. Neverkusen. The name is pretty self-explanatory. Bad luck and individual mistakes have been this team's forte. Bayer Leverkusen finished third in the 21-22 Bundesliga season. Former coach Gerardo Seoane joined at the start of that season and spent his first year at Leverkusen building what many believed would be a dangerous team in the immediate future. They were right, although this Leverkusen team didn't kick off right away and Seoane wasn't really part of that future. You never truly know how well a team is going to perform on a year-by-year -year basis, but I highly doubt Leverkusen fans thought that they would be sitting in 17th place with 5 points in 8 games at the start of last year. Something was going terribly wrong. They were lacking firepower. Striking force Patrick Schick had lost his mojo almost overnight. 24 goals and 27 appearances in 21-22, yet he could only manage 2 goals in 8 at the start of 22-23. It didn't help that the 19-year-old wizard Florian Wirtz was out with injury. A guy that averaged a goal or an assist every 97 minutes in all competitions in 21-22 isn't someone you're going to replace easily. Individual errors were costing them dearly at the most inopportune of moments. Lucas Radeski, usually a competent and very reliable goalkeeper, was guilty of his fair share far more than what's acceptable. He carried a ball over the line against Club Bruges in the Champions League group stages. He gifted Bayern Munich two goals in their 4-0 defeat. Thomas Müller and Jamal Musiala thanked him kindly for that. The rest of the team were responsible for mistakes too. There is no I in team, after all. Long story short, it was not good enough. The usual rumors of miscommunication, or rather failures to communicate, within an international dressing room were making the rounds. Players not understanding each other or the managing staff is probably not ideal. I'm just guessing though, don't, don't quote me on that. Whenever a manager is given the boot, you just get the feeling that there's this sense of inevitability around it. No matter how good the manager is, no matter how much you think they can turn things around, even if they're perfectly capable of doing so, you just feel like, it's not worth it. Personal relationships, trust, camaraderie, and everything in between has been strained so much that the only plausible solution 
is a fresh start. Losing to Porto 2-0 in the Champions League on the 4th of October 2022 was the final nail in his coffin. One day later, he was gone. This was a bad moment. Things were looking rough, but judging by where we are now, Leverkusen had a plan. Like I said in the intro, Leverkusen are a historically competitive team in the Bundesliga. They've never been relegated ever since they were promoted back in the late 70s. I mean, a lot of people were expecting them to come back, but I don't think many people expected them to come back in the way that they have. I also don't think a lot of people expected the arrival of the man that's led the resurgence. There are a lot of reasons that made Xabi Alonso joining Leverkusen look like a strange move. Young manager in his first ever top flight coaching job, struggling team in dire need of a turnaround that even the most experienced of managers would have a hard time with. And like I've already said, a team that's never been relegated. As of right now, all of that doesn't seem like it mattered too much though. There is a seriousness and maturity in our football that reflects Chabi as a person. He's a natural competitor and winner. He's instilled a battle-hardened attitude and a fighting spirit in the side. Leverkusen sporting director Simon Rolfs had this to say. All of this helps in our assessment, but I mean, we don't really need to listen to what Simon Rolfs has said about Chabi Alonso to make our assessments about the guy. All we really need to do is look at his resume. It's a pretty long one. Real Sociedad, Liverpool, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, a crucial figure in every single one of those teams over an 18 year period. A crucial figure for the Spanish national team over their most successful period ever. World Cups, Champions Leagues, Euros, Meisterschales, La Ligas, all that's missing is the Premier League. <clears throat> People often say that the best players tend to make the worst coaches. Even in retirement, odds are they're better than the players that they're coaching. Not being able to transfer over their God-given and painstakingly earned talents can probably be frustrating. We all know that at Bayer Leverkusen, the player you'd most want to have the ball before a cross-field diagonal or a line-breaking through ball is made isn't even a registered player. It's the coach. But all of that doesn't seem to be an issue. Everything is working out pretty fine for Leverkusen as we speak. Alonso may only be 41, but he's taken a long journey to get to where he is right now. One that involved a childhood neighbor in San Sebastian by the name of Mikel Arteta. Coincidentally, they lived on the same street and played for the same youth team. Both highly talented, highly driven people that are on top of global football in a big way. Also, both players that played for Real Sociedad. Not at the same time though. Alonso was off to Liverpool in the same window that Arteta came in, so they never got to link up there. They did, however, play against each other in Merseyside a few times though. It's a fun fact. Some 15 years later though, having won everything, Xabi Alonso would return to La Real, this time to build up a new identity off the pitch. So what did this new identity entail exactly? A high pressing, high possessing, tactically disciplined, adaptable and youth orientated approach. I know, it's uh, it's not the most demanding identity. By implementing this approach, he was able to lead Real Sociedad's B side to promotion from the third tier to the second tier for the first time in 60 years. They may have been relegated that year. I mean, it only makes sense. A young manager, a young inexperienced team that were playing above their level. But at the very least, there was proof of concept here. So much so that attention surrounding this guy was growing all across Europe. Just about every former club that Alonso played for was all of a sudden a rumored destination. But it was Bayer Leverkusen that he chose to go to strange to some. Even though his arrival may not have been expected, this union actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Leverkusen isn't the biggest city, meaning that the attention that they attract probably isn't going to be as high as the attention attracted from clubs from some of the bigger cities. Number two, Leverkusen promotes a family-friendly environment and their ultras are far less radical than clubs from, let's say, Borussia Dortmund, for example. And number three, they aren't perennial title contenders, meaning that the pressure to be the very best isn't really there. But they are a top established team that goes for Champions League every single year. So the pressure to perform is there with room to grow. They aren't the richest, but they are a wealthy club that plays attacking football. They get some flack for not being a 50 plus one club. Bayer AG owns 100% of them, hence the Bayer. But they're not disliked for that in the same way Wolfsburg or Hoffenheim are. Heck, RB Leipzig is a 50 plus one club, technically. And look at how people view them. In other words, this club and this environment is the perfect combination of things to allow for a guy like Chabi Alonso 
to push on and become one of the best in his field. And he's already doing that. When Xabi Alonso joined, his impact was immediate. A 4-0 win over Schalke, the revival had begun. I mean, Schalke did get relegated that year and Leverkusen went on a six-game winless streak straight after this, but it started well. In all seriousness, this was just time needed for Xabi to implement his game plan. I mean, judging by the state of the club when he joined, I don't think a lot of people were too surprised when they weren't doing too well. I'm sure a lot of people expected worse. but. I do think a lot of people were surprised when they saw that this struggling team went on a two-month unbeaten streak, pushing themselves into contention for European spots. A crazy turnaround. But how did it happen? Initially, this team was more on the counter-attacking side. They would absorb pressure, organize themselves, and then pounce on mistakes. Usually, teams like this are fantastic defensively because it requires a lot of concentration. Over time, they've added ball retention and have grown more and more into a fluid unit that commands the ball and gets it. This is the team that we've been seeing continually evolve over the past few months and it's the same team that is still going through that evolution in real time. There are several stats that exemplify this change in approach and how Leverkusen have gone from where they were to where they are. But perhaps two sets of results that exemplify this change are the last two matches against Bayern Munich, both this season and last season. Both positive results for Leverkusen with greatly varying possession stats. Just look at that. Their results against Mönchengladbach paint a similar picture. I can show you all the stats between last season and this season, you know, possession stats, uh, XG, AG, progressive carries, in a second, uh, passes before shots are taken, touches in the opposition's half, progressive balls played, whatever. You don't need to see that. All you really need to see is how these guys play. Back to the Bayern match and you don't need to look further than this. A German team that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bayern, pressing high, pushing high. With the 3-4-2-1 formation that Leverkusen use, there's a lot to be impressed by when they take to the pitch. They have width, they have balance, and most importantly, they have control. Lukas Radeski remains as number one. All three of their centre-backs are comfortable on the ball, making it easy for them to build from the back. Jonathan Tarr, the most senior of this backline, anchors the whole thing, with Edmund Tapsoba and Odilon Kosonu playing on either side of him. Alex Grimaldo and Jeremy Fringpong play in the wing-back roles, joining the attack as wingers in the offence and joining the back line to make a five in defence. Grimaldo was a target for teams all across Europe for ages. He spent seven years at Benfica, and in that time, almost every window there would be rumors attaching him to every top team that needed a left back. In the end, it was Leverkusen who got their man. For free too. Grimaldo's free kick against Bayern was enough to convince me he would be just fine in Leverkusen. Despite the fact that Frimpong was used as a 10, sometimes as a winger by previous managers, Alonso felt it fit to put him as a wing back and can't blame him, he's doing really well there. Granit Xhaka, Ezequiel Palacios and Robert Andrich rotate for the two pivot spots and both drop deep to receive the ball when required. Xhaka, a new signing, brings the hardness and galvanizing presence he did for Arsenal. All three are runners that offer tons of value. In attack, Leverkusen look to create overloads in the wide areas. The wingbacks and the central midfielders push in to support the forwards. They play with two tens who work wonders when it comes to chance creation. And those two players are Florian Wirtz and Jonas Hoffmann. The wirtz hoffmann partnership is one of the most exciting in the Bundesliga. So far, Wirtz and Hoffmann have combined for nine goals and eight assists in all competitions this year. They complement each other so well and have proved pivotal for this team's form. Wirtz is a natural playmaker, gifted beyond his years. His passing range and dribbling is immense. Hoffman is a more versatile player, being able to play both as an attacking midfielder or on either wing. He works hard and he gets into goal scoring positions frequently. In the most recent window, Leverkusen parted ways with a few players, such as 11 year long term servant Karim Bellarabi, although it was more or less his time to go. They did, however, lose their top scorer, Musa. Diaby. Probably not an ideal transfer for a club that's trying to build things from the ground up, you know, losing your top scorer. But the 55 million euros that they received from Aston Villa for him 
probably help to ease the pain. The money helped with the purchases of Granit Xhaka, Jonas Hoffman, Nathan Teller, and most significantly, Victor Boniface. Since joining Leverkusen from Royal Union saint Gilloise, he's been incredible. He scored nine goals. He's been capped for Nigeria for the first time. At 22, he has the dribbling, passing, and finishing range that you'd expect from a top attacking prospect. The three of Wirtz, Hoffman, and Boniface are a lively bunch to look out for. Bayer Leverkusen have shown great resolve already this season. A win against Leipzig on the opening day and a draw versus Bayern show just that. They're passing the early tests. When it comes to players like Alonso that take up coaching, it's not uncommon for them to have had the best of the best coach them and subsequently inspire them to take up management themselves. But when it comes to Alonso, his list of mentors is so comprehensive it's it's kind of crazy. We're talking Carlo Ancelotti, Jose Mourinho, Pep Guardiola, Rafa Benitez, just to name a few. He was even treated to a Mourinho special in the Europa League semi-final last season. A frustrating 1-0 aggregate loss to Roma. Alonso has literally learned from the very best. All the same, there's only one shabby Alonso. He's carving out his own legacy right now, as those that have come before him have done themselves. Now, it's too early to put him in the same category as those managers, of course. But with only one full season under his belt and several more to go, who knows how far he can go. All of that ultimately means nothing if he can't continue to impress in the present day. How far can Leverkusen push in this campaign? Are they legitimate title contenders? The heart says yes, but the brain says don't get too excited, buddy. And there we have it. Let me know what you guys think about Bayer Leverkusen and Xabi Alonso. Feel free to put all your thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to follow all the socials if you want. That's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.